In this video, I'd like to show you how to reskin and set up GUI Kit's standard interface. We'll start in Photoshop. I've got the file Standard GUI Elements 200% open. In this file, all the images are laid out, so you can replace them with your own and export everything at once. When you construct these individual images, you might want to use another included PSD. Standard GUI Construction 200%. It provides a frame of reference for different screen sizes and lets you plan out your interface as it will look when assembled. But back to the other file. I'll hide all the default graphics and unhide the folder that contains my new files. You can see how slices have been set up to allow for easy exporting. All I have to do is hide all the violet layers and layer groups and go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Notice how all slices are set up to export as PNG with transparency. This is a good format to use with Unity. Save all user slices to Assets, Resources, GUI 200% Standard GUI. If you simply overwrite what's there, you will have less to change afterwards. Once this is done, let's scale our file down to 100% for non-retina displays. Go to Image, Image Size, we want 50% for the current size. We want to scale. We want to scale styles and resample the image. Big cubic resampling should be fine. Now save for web and devices again. Only this time to assets, resources, GUI 100% standard GUI. Now let's switch to Unity with the standard GUI project open. As we switch, you see how Unity is re-importing all the files we just overwrote. Since we didn't change the names of any of the files, everything should be in place already. Let's go over the most important options that Standard GUI offers. Here you can select which orientations should be supported. If you support multiple orientations, you'll probably want the in-game cameras to adjust as well. Let's support all four orientations in our game here. This part determines the fading in between levels. Currently it's set to simple color black, so it will fade to black and fade from black. But we can change this to any color or even use an image. Let's change this from black to white and have a look. Okay, here's the background of the menu. We'll change this to something more fitting to the mood of our game. Again, this could just be a simple color as well. Background size factor determines by how many percent the background should be scaled up. You'll want to scale it up a bit, so it still covers the entire screen when it rotates. Background Max Opacity determines how opaque the background image may become. One is totally opaque. If you want to see through to a 3D scene, you uh, might set it to something less though. Check Freeze Time if you want time to stop while you're in the menu. This is good if you want the game to actually pause while you're in the pause menu. If you set freeze time transition duration to something higher than zero, time will not simply stop instantly, but it will first slow down and then stop. Down here we can change the values of the main menu buttons. Let's change this to something different, just for effect. If you want the news box on the bottom of the main menu to load its content from a website, enter the URL here. Leave it empty to only show the default news text and leave this empty as well to hide the entire box. News text if offline should hold some sort of message saying that news couldn't be loaded because you're offline. Something like that. Apple requires you to provide a way for users to opt out of downloading news. So... Um, you might want to use one of the two toggles on the settings page for online offline. Let's use toggle 1. So let's jump down to the settings. Um, let's say toggle 1 is on by default 
and when it changes, the function download news should be called. This function is inside standard GUI, so we don't have to assign any other target. We won't need the second toggle, so we remove its label and this will hide it. Let's check out the result. Alright, that's the settings page. Now uh, let's have a look at levels and the level selection. Our game has more levels than the example, so we'll add those. Let's change the size of the level image name array to the number of levels we have and put in the name of the images. Notice how we're not giving it the actual images, but just the names of the images. The reason for this is that when the script runs, it checks what device it's running on and which resolution it needs to load. It then looks for all these images either in the 100% folder or the 200% folder. Next, we have to set the default level status of all our levels. 1 means complete, 0 means available and minus 1 means it's still locked. These values are stored in the player prefs and you can change them from everywhere simply by doing playerprefs.setInt and for a name you give it level status plus the ID of the level and for the value you give it the value you want to set it to. Next up we enter the actual names of the scenes that make up the levels. The suggested method of level loading is additively. This means that the contents of the current scene won't be thrown out before loading a new level. The new level will simply be loaded in addition to what's currently there. The advantage that this brings is that the standard GUI script will stay in the scene and display a pause button as well as continue to deal with orientation changes. The music can keep playing as well. Now for this to work we have to do a few things with each of our levels. Let's load into a level and I'll show you what to do. First of all you have to parent your entire scene contents to one game object and tag it with the tag level. Standard GUI will look for this when loading a level, it will remember it and destroy it when loading the next level. And secondly, we need to add the assign camera script. This will tell Standard GUI about all the cameras it should include when changing the screen orientation. And well, that's it, not so bad. Oh, and if you spawn objects during the game, don't forget to parent them to the root game object or they'll survive level changes. Now let's go back to the standard GUI script. At the bottom we have matrix angle, offset angle and global position and scale. Let's run the game to see what these do. Matrix angle is a global angle for GUI and cameras, while offset angle affects only the GUI. So if you want the camera's level and your GUI at an angle, change this one. The angle of each individual screen is in matte angle. Global position lets you move the entire GUI around, but I can't think of a good reason for doing this. MatPos, on the other hand, is used in code to move the individual GUI screens in and out. Global scale and matte scale aren't used for anything at the moment, but I'm sure someone could use them to create nice scaling transitions. Yeah, and that's it. I hope this little introduction was uh, helpful. If you want to change the look of the buttons, sliders and such, uh, follow the same workflow, just use the source files in the GUI skin1 folder.